a warm welcome to one and all to api days live india 2021 good morning good afternoon a late good evening to all you few based on where you are joining us from uh, we had two wonderful keynote sessions and now this is the uh, enterprise stage and we will be focusing on uh, the connected customer theme uh, in the first set of four uh, sessions uh, four speakers here <clears throat> Uh, first, we will be joined um, by uh, an expert from the retail industry. Retail uh, has evolved for Indians from a local Kirana store. The Kirana essentially means neighborhood, a neighborhood store uh, to a larger supermarkets to online ordering or phone or ordering via phone to online ordering of groceries even. And uh, taking a uh, uh, trip back the memory line, uh, Lulu is a word which I came across uh, from the large polythene bags being carried by uh, people who, uh, my friends and uh, classmates who used to have one or the other family member based in Middle East. And uh, being from Kerala, being from the state which has um, contributed, uh, sent the most number of immigrants to uh, these 22 countries where Lulu is in operations, I am sure um, Lulu uh, Retail Group is the one which has uh, introduced a more number of Indians to uh, hypermarkets uh, or the large supermarket chains than anybody, any other retail giant in the world. Uh, we are joined by um, Piyush <coughs> from Lulu Enterprises. Uh, a warm welcome, Piyush. Thank you, Prashant, for having me, and I think yeah. uh, a wonderful opening. Can you share your screen? Yes. yes. Yeah, it's there. Shall I get Over going now? Yes. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Prashant. Uh, and uh, warm welcome to everyone uh, to this API Days. Uh, I know it's a great conference. Uh, it brings in great minds together. And uh, we want to make the world uh, better. Uh, by programming as such, uh, which is the motto of API days. And we want to make sure that as, as Lulu Group and uh, the retail fraternity, we want to make sure that all your uh, food and lifestyle needs are met uh, through the work that we do. So give, give a little bit of an uh, introduction. Uh, I have over two decades of experience uh, working predominantly in retail. Uh, I have uh, spent time working with retailers like uh, Tesco, Walmart, uh, and in, in the early part of my career with uh, retailers like Target, Best Buy uh, in the US. And uh, my passion has been uh, looking at how uh, digital trends are impacting or transforming the retail industry. And what I'm going to talk today uh, to the audience here is uh, how I see things are changing in the retail context. And obviously, we'll try to, I'll try to kind of uh, help you understand uh, how digital and how the so-called uh, digital interventions can help some of those transformations which are uh, which are going through and uh, uh, at the end of it uh, this is about a 15 to 20 minute uh, presentation that i will do i would encourage uh, some questions so that it becomes a little bit more interactive at the end for five to seven minutes so uh, I believe that uh, Corona uh, or COVID, uh, as it was called, uh, or is called, uh, is, is a game-changing event for a lot of people, industry, and the world in itself. And retail uh, was no different. Uh, it has taken its own share, and uh, retail has to be reborn. And uh, the, the theme of the presentation today is retail reborn. And we'll kind of touch upon what are the five big things that I see which are transforming the industry in itself. So my belief is that the way we see retail today and the way we will see retail in, let's say, 2030 will be very, very different. And maybe I'm, I'm stretching it too far to 2030. I believe that with the acceleration uh, which is happening, we may see a very, very different phase of retail by the end of 2025. And technology is going to play a very, very big role uh, in transforming this sector. And we'll, we'll touch, touch upon a few of them uh, subsequently. So uh, not, nothing to be surprised about what has happened is as a part of pandemic, uh, the bankruptcies uh, in the retail segment have exponentially grown. Yeah? 
which means that a large number of retailers are getting bankrupt. The amount of store closures which have happened now, we have data only from uh, some of the developed market, be it Europe and the US. The amount of store closures which have happened in the last one year is more than the sum of uh, store closures which happened in the last five years. Yeah, which means that these the the impact of uh, pandemic has been really severe on the uh, on the on the retail industry in itself. But does it mean that it is a gloom and doom story for retail? Absolutely not. What has happened is there is a big shift and a transformation, and I think this is a very key moment. So I've I've been studying retail for uh, almost twenty five years now, and uh, I've I've seen it transition from let's say you started from uh, mom and pop store maybe in the early part of 19th century then you moved into uh, slight aggregation then you moved into hypermarkets then you moved into some amount of uh, multi channel i would say uh, be it either through catalogs either through uh, phone ordering and, and stuff like that and then obviously in the in the early part of this uh, century we saw the uh, the birth of internet commerce or e-commerce yeah and the e-commerce in itself a transition and i think we'll we'll kind of see but the amount of push and change that i'm seeing now is unprecedented the fast pace at which things are changing is unprecedented and it opens up a huge opportunity for all the tech geeks all the people who are listening today to see how they can kind of ride on this transformation and create something which is very different uh in this space so uh we will talk about uh five key evolutionary trends and uh, I, mark my words it is evolution yeah it is not that we are saying that the retail is gone and something else will come in that is not the case at all retail is going to continue the other question that people often ask me is that what is the uh, future of physical stores physical stores are going to stay i have been consistent in the last 10 years when people were talking about whether the uh, physical stores will exist or not i strongly believe and i think it is proven by all the digital native retailers uh, trying to buy and uh, establish physical stores that physical store or physical connect is going to continue but the shape and form that is today is not going to continue the way it is so we'll talk about the five evolutionary trends one is everything has to be transformed yeah uh, the the current ways of working uh, is, is something which may not be relevant and COVID has actually heightened the need of these evolutions, which existed. So there are three pillars that uh, uh, that I see uh, things evolving. The operations will be hugely different because the store of the future and the store of the past are two very different entities in itself. Stores of the past were morely transaction oriented and stores of the future will be experience oriented. And that is the second pillar in which you need to create uh, destinations which are much more experience oriented rather than transaction oriented transaction can happen anywhere but people come to physical locations for an experience and that experience is something that everybody needs to build on and the last is this line between digital uh, physical uh, multi channel all that has to be kind of blurred and you need to have something called as an omni commerce which means that Customers should be having a very, very seamless experience across all the channels. There should not be any friction by moving from one channel to the other for the customer as, as such. And I think these are three evolutionary uh, kind of pillars that retailers need to look at. And this actually open up an industry in itself. So experience, I would say, is an omnichannel is an industry in itself already. But I think experience is where the maximum amount of investment will come in, maximum amount of transformation will come in, and we'll see a very, very different destination for the stores in the, in the coming days and the coming years. The, the one thing, uh, trend which is very, very clear is there is a big digital divide. And uh, as you would have uh, read, uh, again, from data from the US, is that the large is becoming larger. So for example, the Walmarts, the Amazons, and the Kroger's and the uh, targets of the world are becoming much and much bigger. And the small mom and pop stores, unfortunately, are not able to compete with that. So there's a big digital divide which is happening. And I think this is good or bad is a, is a different topic in itself. But I feel that this is very much visible in the days to come. And the reason is that 
digital requires huge amount of investment it requires very long life cycles it involves uh, requires a long payback period and uh, a long uh, uh, kind of return cycles and hence only the big players at the moment are able to afford that in the future I, 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 and this is the next phase in in the future there are a lot of these hyper local small digital enablement platforms which are coming which will then bring these so called small players into a digital uh, player and then there will be a equal divide uh, in terms of the comp competition which is which is going to play out so watch out this space the big has already taken a, a step ahead but i believe that there will be a lot of uh, uh, kind of uh, excitement which would be coming in the in the days in which you will see lot of so called hyper local so called innovative ways of bringing all these small players together to create a create a kind of a much much larger play which can then compete with these so called large players digital transformation uh, will have to be accelerated and uh, the, the belief is that uh, 84% of the country uh, companies believe that Uh, digital transformation is is important now one thing to be noted is that uh, it's not that digital transformation came in as part of the covid yeah uh, that is that is not true at all but what has happened is the transformation speed the transformation engine which was built had to be accelerated and as, as you would see there are a lot of these companies so for example uh, uh, there are a lot of these uh, so called uh, uh, coffee shops yeah when when the um, when the uh, lockdowns happened nobody would uh, come to a coffee shop and so there are a lot of these uh, 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 coffee shops which basically started saying that why not use uh, some of the staff that we have and create something as an offering from an, for a delivery of essential commodities and so that transformation from one offering to the other and then back is something which i think was very important and that is Uh, demonstrated that people are who are able to are, are more dig digitally transformed and digitally savvy are the ones which are going to sustain this onslaught of transformation which is happening in the industry and the other reality is that only a few companies and uh, 3% of the companies actually finished a large number of digital transformation initiatives so there is a big gap 84% want it but only a few are able to actually do it and so there's a huge opportunity for lot of the tech and the digital uh, organizations to bridge that gap and so there will be huge investment uh, there is a lot of money which uh, uh, which is being pumped into the sector and i believe that uh, digital is the, is the way forward uh, for this industry the other uh, uh, kind of differentiator which happens and uh, this is again from a transition that i've seen is that earlier the retailers were more inward focus which means that they would say that okay i am a very uh, great in supply chain management i am very great in marketing i am very great in category management which are all internal facing functions and which were silos so category management is all about understanding the choice of the customer uh, positioning the products and so on and so forth supply chain is making sure that you efficiently move things higher now what is needed in today's context is customer is saying that i don't care about all those things i care only about the experience that i have with you yeah and this shift is forcing the retailers to move away from transactions with the customer to selling experiences and that is what you will see what e-commerce players did is try to sell an experience yeah although we may look as if it is uh, selling uh, products online but actually if you see it is not that successful for everyone right because everybody is not able to deliver that great experience which is uh, being offered by a few of them with the amazons and the uh, and the other other uh, digital native players which are out there and hence one of the things which is very very important is customer experience is going to be the key differentiator for every retailer in the days to come and if retailers are not able to pivot themselves back into this customer experience mode and continue to be in a transaction mode it is going to be very very difficult for them to sustain as well as compete in the in the days to come so customer experience while it sound it sounds that it is very easy but i think it is a very very difficult transformation and a transition which the retailers need to go do and it is very important that cx becomes a core part of their business strategy 
and they basically align all the internal functions internal processes so that they are able to deliver a great experience to all their customers and the uh, the other uh, thing is uh, omni channel now this term has been there for quite a while now uh, people have been saying that we are doing omni channel and uh, but actually in, in true sense most of the retailers be it even be it digital natives as well as the physical retailers were actually doing multi channel and the kind of uh, transition between the various channels which they offer their uh, products and services for was not very seamless and that to me is a, is a big transformation opportunity bringing in a very very easy transition from physical to digital and digital to physical is something is what is needed in the days to come and i believe that billions of dollars will be spent in building these omni channel experience platforms which are going to be very different from the today's e-commerce that we are seeing today in tomorrow's e-commerce experience we are talking about having image video interaction chat ai nlp and so on and so forth all these things put together into an experience which the customer is looking for and i think that is a very very different experience than what is being offered today which is more channel centric either it is a uh, e-commerce centric or either it is a physical centric or they are trying to do it through some other uh, uh, channels as such the last big trend that i see uh, is going to be very different in the days to come is and i think that was uh, 2020 was a defining moment uh, and a tipping point that the digital spending digital ad spending was equal to or or almost yeah, almost equal to the traditional media spending and this is a, is a huge uh, martech is going to be a huge opportunity for uh, a lot of the tech players to say that how can we move all of my digital all of my ad spending and there is a uh, billions and billions of dollars for which is lying with all the marketing officers how can you transform that into into the digital ad spending now why this is important is when you move to digital your roi becomes significantly higher in a digital uh, spending space you are able to target the customers better you are able to get much better personalized experiences and personalized targeting to the to the consumers which gives a very different experience and hence every dollar spent for marketing in the digital ad spend gives you a much higher roi and and then there is no rocket science to say that this trend will continue and uh, in 2 to 3 years what will happen is the digital spend will be almost two third of the overall physical spend uh, or the traditional media spend which is out there so watch out this space personalization marketing uh, uh, and uh, kind of ai enabled uh, targeting uh, is a space which is which is going to be very very relevant in the days to come and so with disruption being the new norm the future success of your organizations depends on the ability to adapt and change while all the five transition or evolutionary trends that we talked about are in front of us only a few will be able to adapt and the ones who will be able to adapt are the ones which have kind of imbibed innovation and agility as their kind of so called mantra as i would say of the culture of the organization until and unless you make innovation and agility as the two pillars on which you can do a lot of things experiment a lot of things none of those five things will actually make it to what you are trying to uh, kind of convert the organization into and so uh, coming to uh, the final summary uh, the five big trends uh, that i see in retail are uh, digital divide will widen uh, and there will be clear segregation between the uh, so called large digital players and the so called non digital players and slowly the non digital players will continue to shrink in business digital transformation will accelerate at a pace that we have never seen before customer experience will be a key differentiator and true omni channel will be the new uh, model uh, that every retailer need to adopt and finally you need to reach out to your customers through digital marketing and with personalized engagement and if all these five things are able to uh, uh, be imbibed in in the new uh, retail uh, organization 
we will see a very very different way this industry is transforming into and so i believe that there are very great opportunities that i talked about these are all industries in itself or verticals in itself and we may be talking about uh, multi, uh, many hundreds of billions of dollars being spent in in all of these uh, uh, five opportunities which are out there and uh, i believe that uh, we are in a very exciting time and uh, i hope that a uh, lot of technology comes in and helps the customers deliver something with the retailers or trying to sell it to them or to the customers thank you so much prashant you are on mute hey thanks piyush uh, uh, thanks for those wonderful insights uh, on the future of retail uh, a couple of questions so how do you foresee the penetration in rural areas of india as of now the digital transformation has not really benefited every nook and corner of the country say remote eastern states of north the states in india and this is uh, coming to the uh, transformation that we are seeing is is that uh, obviously in the initial days you will see a lot more uh, evolution and action happening in in the large part of the uh, metro regions uh, but uh, the rural sector and the non organized sector they offering there has to be very different in particularly in india yeah the same uh, offering uh, let's say uh, which is there in the in the large metro with the high spending high ba- high uh, basket value spending may not be relevant in the in the remote areas and that is what we are seeing uh as well as when we when we reach out to the market so there are a lot of these hyper local models there are so called uh, aggregator models which are which are kind of coming up uh, we have seen a uh, uh, lot of it uh, being in early stages as of now but i feel that that is a different market segment in itself which requires a very different thinking and a very different product uh, offering in itself okay uh, I, i'm aware of the um, malls and the hypermarket uh, uh, play that lulu has in india so uh, do you have a, a digital commerce plan a super app in the works something that Not we can really. look yeah so i uh, think that has been the buzz word the super app is, is has been the buzz word uh, <laughs> in the last uh, few years uh, we right. believe that uh, we still are relevant uh, in the, in the current context uh, we have uh, we have a sizable uh, not a very big but we have a sizable plan in terms of uh, how can we uh, get into a more omni channel experience we are not looking at a pure e-commerce uh, play as of now because we believe that our strength lies in uh, pr- pr- providing a very very unique omni channel experience and so uh, our transformation journey is more towards making all our countries uh, 12 countries that we operate and 22 countries that we have our offices and uh, operations in we want to make sure that all of them come together to create an omni channel experience to our customers okay great uh, thanks a lot peers i Thank think you. yeah there are no hope it was questions. helpful yeah and uh, yes. uh, wishing everyone uh, for uh, to be safe and i think it's difficult times make sure that uh, you are taking care of yourself and let's let's be helping each other in this difficult time thank you all thank you peers thank you